Okay, welcome back. So we're talking about the controllability of the system x dot equals ax plus bu. And remember, though, the reason we want to know if the system is controllable is because we want to, we want to know if it's, if it's possible to design a control law u equals kx to make the system have desired stability properties or performance. Okay? And we have this simple test in terms of the rank of the controllability matrix. But there are a number of other interesting tests for the controllability of a system of equations. And I'm going to tell you about one really, really interesting one called the uh, Popov Belovich uh, Houtis. Houtis, the PBH test. Okay, and the PBH test, so I just remember the Popov, cheap vodka. The Popov, the PBH test is an extremely simple test for controllability. It's, it rivals this in terms of how simple it is, but you also get a tremendous amount of insight into why and how a system is controllable. Okay, so the PBH test is extremely simple. So the pair A comma B is controllable, is CTRB if and only if, right, so if and only if, the following is true. The rank of A minus lambda times the identity matrix, so that's an n by n matrix, and B, our input actuation matrix, if this rank equals n for all uh, lambdas in the complex plane. Very simple to say. Okay, it's simple to say. This A and B matrix is controllable, which is equivalent to this having rank M. The A and B pair is, is controllable if and only if the rank of this N by N matrix uh, concatenated with the columns in B is N for every single lambda in the complex plane. Very simple. And there's some immediate outfalls that I think are really useful. So first of all, just think about this object, this n by n object. When does this thing ha have rank n? Okay, so I always ask my students this. When does a minus lambda i have rank n? Or maybe more specifically, when does this not have rank n? So when this thing is rank deficient, that's the only time that this determinant is equal to zero. And that is the eigenvalue equation. Determinant of this matrix equals zero is the eigenvalue equation. It's only satisfied for, at most, n special lambdas that are eigenvalues. So if lambda is not an eigenvalue of A, this matrix alone has rank n. And I don't even need B. Okay, so first fact that's super interesting is that we only, so the rank, so rank of A minus lambda i equals n except for eigenvalues, eigenvalues lambda. So what that means is that I only have to test this PBH test at the eigenvalues of A. So it's, this is for all lambda in the complex plane, but we only need to test at eigenvalues. Does that make sense? Because this matrix has rank n unless lambda is an eigenvalue. That's, if lambda is an eigenvalue, that's the definition of this being rank deficient. And so we only need to test this PBH test at, at most, n eigenvalues lambda of a. So we went down from all of the complex plane, which would, have been really hard, would be really hard to test. And now we just have to test this rank condition at all of our eigenvalues. Okay? Now, Let's think a little deeper about this. Let's pick an eigenvalue and plug it in here. So we know that a minus lambda i is now rank deficient. But in what direction is a minus lambda i rank deficient? Well, if I look at like the null space of this, that's the eigenvector, right? This thing, this thing is, is rank deficient in exactly the eigenvector direction. The eigenvector is what makes this multiply to equal 0. So what that means is essentially another fact we have is that the only way that this matrix is rank deficient is in the eigenvector direction. And so for this to be controllable, for this to have rank n, 
this actuation vector or column or set of vectors B has to complement, it has to have some component in that eigenvector direction. That will allow it to be linearly independent from this matrix. Okay, so B needs to have some component in each eigenvector direction. Okay, and let me just say that uh, one more time because I think this is super important and I want to make sure it's, it's crystal clear. So we're trying to make this matrix have rank n for the system to be controllable. We only have to test at eigenvalues of A, these specific lambdas. And if we plug in one of those eigenvalues, this thing is only rank deficient in the eigenvector directions corresponding to that eigenvalue. So for this to be true for all of those lambdas, then B has to have some component in that eigenvector direction that's missing from this. So this rank would be like n minus 1, and I need that B column vector to be in the eigenvector direction, or at least have some component in all of the eigenvector directions. And so a really, really important outfall of this is that 3, and this is kind of advanced, okay, so this is super cool. Just going to say this is advanced. So for those of you who like compress sensing and randomize linear algebra, this is going to be really, really neat and intuitive to you. So if B is a random projection, so if B is, uh, so for B, let me just write this out in words. If B is a random vector, okay, so in other words, if b equals rand n, n by 1, it's literally a random column vector, then a, b will be controllable with high probability. So this is kind of the modern way of saying that with high probability, Okay, so what that means is the following. So we know that to be controllable, the, this actuation B can't, okay, so it can't be aligned with one eigenvector only. If B is an eigenvector of A, then this will have rank N for that particular lambda, but for all other lambdas, this won't help, okay? This won't make that have rank N. So B has to have at least some component in every eigenvector direction. And the really amazing thing is that if I select B randomly, if I just pull out a random vector from Rn, with high probability, it's going to have a little bit in all of those eigenvector directions. I'd have to get extremely unlucky for B to be aligned with one or two or, or you know, only a few eigenvectors. And so it's highly likely, very, very likely, that a random vector, a random B vector, is going to have some component in all of the eigenvector directions of A. And so with high probability, this will have rank n for all eigenvalues lambda. That's really, really remarkable, is that if this is, even if this is like a very high dimensional system, a million by a million dimensional system, if I pull out a random b vector in Rn, with high probability, it's going to be able to control all of those states in Rn. That's really, really remarkable and cool. And it kind of relies on some of this randomized linear algebra ideas that if you just randomly sample a vector, it's going to have some component in all basic directions, okay? It's going to be unlucky for it to be aligned uh, with any one eigenvector of A. Okay, and so this is really remarkable. Another thing that I think is super cool is this actually tells you how many control channels. So remember, we've been acting like B is just a column vector, which means that there's only one control knob U. But in principle, right, x is a vector, a is a matrix, b is a matrix, u could be a vector of control inputs. Okay, so I could have multiple input channels u, like I could have u1 and u2 and u3 and so on and so forth. The PBH test tells me how many, what is the minimal number of actuators I can get away with? What's the minimal number of columns b I need for a given a matrix? And it has to do, in particular, with the multiplicity of the eigenvalues of A.
So the only way that this subspace, that th this can be ranked efficient in more than one direction, is if this thing has a, an eigenvalue with multiplicity greater than one. So if, a, if the A matrix has a repeated eigenvalue, let's say it has an eigenvalue of one and then another eigenvalue of one, it can actually have a two-dimensional, uh, it, can, it can have two directions in which uh, this matrix, uh, how do I want to say this? There can be two directions, two eigenvector directions that are in the null space of this operator. And so I would need two columns of B to fill in that null space and have a rank N uh, condition. So let me say that again. If I have a simple eigenvalue, one eigenvalue that's not repeated, all my eigenvalues are distinct, it doesn't matter if I have a billion dimensional state vector and a billion by billion A matrix, I can get away with having a single input column U, a single input column B, and I can control all of those billion directions as long as I have distinct eigenvalues. Because this thing will never have more than one direction in which it's rank deficient, and I can, I can essentially complement it with this B vector. Now, if I have an eigenvalue that has multiplicity greater than one, I have a repeated eigenvalue, let's say it's repeated three times, that tells me I need three independent columns of B to fill in that rank. So I need three inputs, I need three control knobs if I have a multiplicity three eigenvalue. This is really remarkable. We learn just from this simple test, I don't actually use this test, I use it to think about when something is controllable and how controllable and things like that. So I don't actually ever compute this rank, but it tells you these very important properties of random vectors are almost certainly controllable. Or if I have multiplicity two eigenvalue, I need two control input channels. And where this gets interesting is there are gray areas. So what if I have two eigenvalues that are really, really close? They're not exactly equal. Or what if I have two eigenvectors that are super duper close, but not exactly equal? So these things are approximately degenerate. Again, I might have a, this, this binary condition might say, yes, the system's controllable, but it might be barely controllable. So sometimes I'd want to have multiple columns of B anyway to boost my control authority if I have nearly degenerate eigenvalues, nearly, uh, you know, nearly identical eigenvalues. And so this can give you an idea of those, those gray areas where this thing is almost rank deficient in two directions, and so maybe I need two control columns to boost my control authority. Okay, I just had to show you this because, you know, I mean, there's many, many tests. Again, usually I don't actually compute this for all of the eigenvalues, but it gives you a very nice way of thinking about when a system's controllable in terms of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of A. It tells you what kinds of B vectors I want. I want a B that can reach all of the eigenvectors of A. Right, that's a very simple thing. I want B to be able to kind of align with all of the eigenvector directions of A. And if I have a subspace corresponding to an uh, eigenvalue with a repeated eigenvalue, I need multiple columns of B to satisfy this rank condition. So to simultaneously control those multiplicity, you know, two or greater directions, I need multiple control columns, actuation columns. Okay, thank you.